Today we're going to do an unboxing of the Defender 25 Fire iFlight, which as you can tell straight away, if we put this box right next to the Avata from DJI, it's built to be in competition with this drone, or more or less. So we'll discuss that later, uh, more videos to come on this. But yeah, very similar ducted fan type cine group designs, um, very similar boxes. DJI have always been great with their boxing. The Defender, beautiful box, not much on it, but it's looking very, very nice and clean and the kind of user experience that iFlight seem to be refining to create for their customers. So we're gonna get straight on to unboxing this. bit of protective foam, put that to one side and we have a little bag with instructions. We shouldn't need any of these instructions because the um, Defender 25 should come with the O3A unit pre-installed so there's no need to do anything other than maybe some binding with the headset and transmitter. But yeah. So we've got some stickers in there. Stickers. Uh, whatever this is, I don't speak Chinese, so we'll leave that. This is the typical kind of wiring diagrams you get for installing your own receivers on these kind of drones. I find a very, very good at making installations as user-friendly and easy as possible. So um, if you've had an iFlight drone before, you'll be used to this. Again, no idea what that says, but oh, oh, there we go. We've got English as well. Just some safety guidelines on flying drones. So that's nice. So there we've got the drone. So let's get the, I'll do the boring stuff in a minute. So let's get straight onto it. Spare props. Three bladed props, Avata has five bladed props, so slight difference there. And then we have the Avata, uh, the Defender 25. Uh, that's come off, which was to do with pre, oh. I'm on iFlight pre-tuned BNF, just bind and fly, that's nice. And there we have it. So that actually looks really nice. It's got a decent feel to it. Yeah, definitely feels a lot lighter. So that's got the battery already installed on it. Let's move this out of the way. Battery pre-installed on it. So this is the ready to fly weight. So we'll have a look at the weight in a minute. Um, lots of stickers on these, which is what we're getting accustomed to with iFly drones. Um, for best performance, place the battery in the center of gravity. So presumably you can, no, you can't really change the position of the battery, so I don't know why they put that on there. Um, we have a sticker over the top of the, over the top of the um, camera. Angle, self Angle self-bouncing level models enabled by default to make sure your first flight doesn't end in a mess. It's very small writing. Okay, so basically what they're saying is use that angle to start with because if you mess around with it and, and you're a beginner, you might crash. And that's basically if you have a very steep angle, you'll be flying very fast and if you're not used to it, end up in a mess okay so there's not much to these it's it does I mean it's got a bit of a plastic feel about it you've got these sort of hollowed out sections here which you don't tend to see with um, the Avata um, in fact I'm gonna get the Avata out for comparison Avata Defender 25 so the Defender is definitely a smaller drone and that's to be expected it does have smaller motors which we can measure in a minute um, it's lighter, the Avata is over 400 grams. This is meant to be 250 or under 250 grams. But yeah, I mean, it's 
If you've flown the Protec 25 before, you'll be accustomed to um, that kind of design. I think it's a very similar design. It's almost like a updated version to incorporate this new battery design and the O3 system, but the frame itself, uh, very minimalistic, very lightweight, but I think it's one of these things where until you start crashing these, you're not gonna know how well it's gonna, how well it's gonna do. So at this stage, let's have a quick look at the battery fitting between these two. So with the Avata battery, you unclip the this plug at the back, squeeze and pull. That's your battery changing down. I'll just put it back in again. Very simple. With the Defender 25, I presume, yep, yeah, we press these tongs here. Put it up like that and back in again. So I'm presuming that these notches here are your perfect um, center of gravity. Okay, that's nice, nice little click there. It does move around a bit in there. Don't know if that'll affect the flight or the gyros or anything, but okay. Um, and then to plug it in, we've got this 3D printed, uh, so almost like an XT30 size um, battery cap. Uh, FPV flyers quite often use these kind of 3D printed things to mark which batteries are charged and which ones aren't. And then that plug will plug in there. I'm not gonna plug it in now because it's not bound to anything yet, but that would plug in there. And pretty much as I suspected, that battery, it's very unlikely to be a smart battery. I can't see that weight how it's going to be one. I presume that these prongs here are for balancing and these are your main power lines. So very simple, very lightweight. This weighs very, very little. I mean, it's, it's, it has nothing to this, but it's only a 500 milliamp battery. But yeah, easy to fit. Certainly no, not, not any more difficult to fit than the Avata, so that's good. Okay, so smaller props, three inch, 2.5 inch, three bladed, five bladed. Um, motor sizes are different. I believe these are uh, 1408 motors. So the 1.4 would normally be your, um, uh, refer to your diameter of the status and the 08 would be the depth. Um, the, uh, the Defender has o, uh, 1404 status. So as you can see, side on. You've got a substantially different size in motor. And because of that, your Defender 25 will have a lot less power than the Avata, but that's to be expected because it's got smaller batteries and it's lighter. So the question is gonna be how well this performs in windy conditions compared to this. This runs on Betaflight. This runs on DJI's own flight control system. Betaflight is completely tunable. Um, so that's a nice feature to have if you like to get under the bonnet and start tweaking things. If you don't, then this might not be the drone for you. But the stock iFlight PIDs and settings tend to be really good. They're very good at setting these things up to work well out of the box. So this should, in theory, fly quite well. So the Defender 25's got two USB-C ports, one for configuration of the flight controller and one for um, access to the O3 unit. And they are supposed to all be easily accessible according to the spec. It's also got an SD, micro SD card um, slot. Okay, so there's a, okay. So at the back, you've got this kind of rubber piece here covering the USB-C port. And you can take this out. It's like a tiny little rubber piece and that covers your USB-C. I'm pretty sure that this is gonna get lost once you start flying. So I don't know if that's supposed to be in there while you're flying or while you're storing it, but a little piece like this, which can be removed, is bound to get lost. So I presume this USB-C port's just supposed to be left open eventually, but that's fine. Um, the USB, there's another USB-C there in here. Oop. 
there. And above that, you've got the micro SD card. Now, I would say that one is a similar location to the um, Avata, which has been the gripe of many people. So just by comparison, the Avata has the ports under here in this location, which is quite difficult to access, especially with this thing dangling around. But it's got a nice sort of pre-installed sort of cover there, which is, as long as it's pushed down properly, is quite nice. Um, the Defender 25, I'd say it's probably a bit easier to access, but it is still in this sort of location. So it's set down a bit further below the motor and the propeller, but I wouldn't say this is necessarily the best place to have it. It's just the nature of where the ports are in the flight stack. But um, yeah, it's, uh, I think, fitting a USB-C cable. In fact, I might just do it in there, just get a USB-C. Right, this, let's take the prong out, see how easy this is to fit. So bear in mind, you'll be doing this a lot if you use the um, onboard storage on the um, stack, which is quite handy to have. USB-C, <laughs> that's a lot easier. I mean, there we go, just, just like that. And I don't think I need to demonstrate how difficult it is to put this in on the Avata. Um, anyone who's flown the Avata will know that it's a slight pain in the ass, but there you go. Okay, so yes, the port, certainly the USB-C port is easier to access. I'm gonna guess, let's, let's try the, let's get a micro SD card, see how easy that is to access. Yes, micro SD, I can't remember which way around they go. No, not that way. Micro SD card. Okay, I've got short fingernails, so. Okay, depending on how long your fingernails are. Ah, there we go, so that's in. Yeah, it's not too bad. I wouldn't say the SD card's any easier to get in and out than the Avata, but certainly the USB-C port is definitely much easier to get to, so that's a good thing. So on the front is a little dial of a, an angle or something, so I'm not sure what this means, but I'll have a look at the instructions and see what they're referring to there, but yeah. Okay. So let's have a look at the, uh, the weight of this. So we'll take the battery off. When you look at this without a battery on it, it just does look so minimalist. I mean, there's nothing to it. And I guess from a price point of view, when you consider that really, realistically speaking, including taxes, um, the Avata and the Defender are very similar priced. Uh, <laughs> you kind of feel a bit like, mm, it's, you, you feel like you're getting a bit more for your money on this one, but, um, but it looks as in everything and we'll see how they fly. So, we'll get uh, balance out and have a look. 165, 167 grams. The battery alone, 69 grams. And the drone with battery together are 135. That's way under, and I haven't taken I haven't taken taken these stickers off yet. So that is way under 250 grams. Wow. Should have got a few extra milliamps on that battery. Right, and then we have the 900 milliamp battery. The scale I'm using is a laboratory calibrated scale, so that should be accurate. And let's open this up. So that battery does feel a little bit heavier than the, uh, the previous one. Obviously it's the same size. So let's have a look at these two. Two batteries. And then looking at the weights of these again. 
so 69.5 grams and 99 grams. Okay, 99 grams, which means that oh, the weight, including the larger battery, which will push it over 250 grams, is 265 grams. It's only just over. So you, I mean, it, from a legal standpoint, you are now going to be over the 250 grams threshold. But in terms of the impact it's had on the weight, I mean, it's still a very lightweight drone. Uh, by comparison, if we take the Avata, we're looking at 415 grams. This is upside down, so I'm having to look around it. Yep, 416 grams. So about well over, two, well over 150 grams more for the Avata. Okay, let's bring this back in. This battery fitting system is nice. I mean, it's, it's so simple, so quick. It seems quite secure. I mean, I can't see how this is gonna get ejected, but it is a very nice system. Um, I, hopefully this rattle isn't gonna affect it. If it does, you could probably install some kind of very thin foam under it or something, provided it doesn't interfere with this system, um, the clipping system, but once you've plugged this in, that plug lead might make the whole thing more rigid anyway, so it's fine. Okay, there we've got the O3 camera. Looks very nice. Same camera as the Avata, so the filters you have on the Avata will fit onto this drone as well. And that's it, it's, it's very clean. There's no, ca no antennas or anything. It's just a, a very nice, clean looking drone. And then in the package, we also get this charging adapter, which is required to charge the battery. Now it's worth pointing out that unlike the Avata, which can be charged by USB-C, this, uh, the Defender 25 needs a proper charger to charge this adapter. So you will have to use this adapter in conjunction with a LiFo charger, which you can buy from iFlight. You can use other third-party um, LiPo chargers as well. And unlike the Avata, which is very foolproof, you will have to learn a little bit about how to set up your um, LiPo chargers and the number of cells, the charge rate, and so on, as well as your battery management. So that's worth, wearing, uh, worth bearing in mind. I will talk more about that in future videos um, when I look at the performance of this and how to work with this drone. But for now, just something to bear in mind. That adapter does come with some nice adapters, uh, some nice adapter leads. So this is nice because my LiPo chargers tend to be XT60. This cable will adapt this XT30, it's a very small yellow plug, to an XT60, which are the larger plugs generally used. Um, balance leads, yeah, that's nice. They're all little jobs that you might have to otherwise solder up and it just, it's just a bit of a pain, so it's nice. A lot of 3D printed parts here. So these bits here are 3D printed. This is 3D printed out of uh, PLA probably. Um, even this inside part is 3D printed. So they, it's interesting. They, it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a homemade feel to this. I mean, you've got a basically a CNC cup plate and then 3D printed parts sandwiched between them. So this is the kind of thing that you could pretty much make in your garage. Wouldn't, wouldn't want to, but if it works, it's fine. Um, the battery will then presumably fit onto there. All right, okay, so there's a little hook here. You hook it in like this, press down. Let's press these prongs down onto there. And then I guess you'll plug this into there. And then these connectors will connect it to your charger where you'll just charge it like a conventional LiPo battery. Okay. So I do find this uh, battery system a bit bizarre really because you've got, you've got this system which is fantastic for fitting onto the Defender 25, 
this is great, plug it in and you're good to go. So it's nice and secure. There's no using straps or anything like that. I like that. But then in doing so, you've created this slightly more complex charging system where you still need a conventional charger to power this adapter lead. And this adapter is just an adapter to basically take you from this system into being charged by a conventional charger. So that is a bit strange, but um, well, it's I guess it depends on if you want the mounting on your drone to be easier or if you want your charging process to be easier. In my view, you're gonna to have to mount it onto this once per flight or onto this once per flight. So it's a bit bizarre. It's a shame they haven't made this smarter. I appreciate that would have made it more expensive. Um, but I'm gonna start flying with it, see what it's like to live with and work with, and then um, we'll take it from there. So it it's nice looking, but just seems a bit, a bit counterproductive. But um, I like the look of it though. It's very nice looking. Okay. That is that, so I think we've gone through pretty much everything. There's no lens protection here, so no covers for these lenses, so it'll probably be worth making some kind of a, maybe a TPU lens protector or something like that. Obviously on the Avata, you have a this nice protector here, nothing like that on here. Um, other parts, we've got this little bag of uh, what have we got here? These black things, whatever they are. I don't, I'm not, I'll have to work out what these black stickery type things are. Where are they? Ah, uh, they... Okay, so I think that these black stickers go on the frame and basically stop this from sliding around or protect the batteries or do something like that. Because of the shape, they seem... Yeah, that'll fit. So this sticker fits onto there like that. Okay, fair enough. I presume what that's that's what this is for. Yeah, it's not going to go under there, but it will. I'll read the instructions later, and we'll figure that one out. And some spare props, and that is pretty much it. A couple of extra points uh, I've noticed which are worth mentioning. Um, you've got a link button labeled here. So to access that, you need to get a pointy, something pointy through this little venti, grating area here in order to bind the DJI O3 system to your um, radio and um, uh, goggles. The camera is on a rubberized, sort of like a, it's got like a washer or some kind of damping system in it. So you can adjust that gam uh, that angle without having to undo any bolts. Hopefully they'll stay in place. Biggest up tilt is around about there, like this. Which looks like maybe somewhere between 30 to 40 degrees, which is enough for cine whoop style flying. And the other thing really worth mentioning at this point is anyone considering this drone coming from the Avata this does not have any GPS, so there's no position hold, no indication of your location or speed. So if you're dependent on those features or if you need those features, then this wouldn't be the drone for you. But on the other hand, this one has beta flight, which is a pretty awesome um, flight control system. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will fly pretty damn good. So yeah, worth bearing in mind, no GPS on this. Okay, so that concludes the Defender 25 uh, unboxing. It's not a full review yet. Um, I'll be putting this through its paces, see how it flies and performs compared to the Avata very soon. Um, hope you found this useful. Um, any questions or anything that you feel you'd like to see in my reviews on this, in flight reviews, please drop any comments on that in the uh, comments below. And I'll certainly be reading through all of those and take that into account. Uh, any questions, also drop them in there and I'll do my best to answer them but uh, so yeah that's the Defender 25 by iFlight hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching <laughs>